G'day folks, I am Beanie, you're watching Beanie Draws, and I am back with a new tutorial on how to draw Spinosaurus the quote-unquote correct way. I have been taking a break from editing a video, which is long overdue, and I've been taking a break from Uber, so I thought, let's do a drawing, because I haven't done one in a while. So, what we're going to do is, um, first of all, for blah, 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 blah first and foremost, National Geographic actually has a really good website on the Spinosaurus now, so I'll link that in the description, I'll pop that up in the little thingy-majiggy somewhere around here. But what we're going to do is focus on the fact that Spinosaurus has a bit of a long and short body, it seems. So I'm just going to put in a bit of a rough little line, for just going just gonna to make it rough for now. So a bit of a body, tail, something like that, just just something rough. And then we're going to try and figure out where the position for the body and tail and sail will be. And hopefully you guys can see this pretty decently because I'm experimenting with a new LED light. So I'm just going to see if the lighting might be a bit better in this video. What I'm going to do is the uh, spine I think will be the best spot to place in for pro for um, proportional purposes. I'm going to put in a spine up here. Spine on Spinosaurus isn't the long elongated wave like we used to, like my previous video had. Mind you, that previous video was based on Jurassic Park 3, which, you know, Jurassic Park isn't exactly the most accurate of dinosaur portrayals. Gonna have a gonna have the sail going up, down slightly, up into a point, and down. <coughs> Bear with me because I'm gonna be coughing a bit. I've got a um chest infection. I'm gonna try my best not to cough too much during this video. Um I'm just now revising where I've put this sail to see if I've given myself enough room to position the head and the tail in. This is the the first part and the hardest part of drawing a dinosaur, I believe, anyway. So I think that's the pelvis will be about here. Tail's going to be kind of tapered like that. The head will be about there. I'm just roughly placing all this in still. Might have to zoom in later on for the details, but um, I'm just that's the problem with very long, narrow dinosaurs. They tend to be difficult to draw. Well, not difficult to draw, they're just difficult to, you know, have the detail in the screen. So the neck will be arched in a bit of a... Yeah, I'd say that's an arch. Um, the website has an interesting fact sheet on the Spinosaurus, which I haven't read yet, because I just wanted to go straight to drawing it. And the shoulder would be about... looks like the shoulder blade be there because I like using shoulder blades and bits bits of bone to um sort of proportionize things. I'm just gonna make sure make I might make my image a little bit darker because my lights are my strokes are a little bit on the um, light side. And for those of you wondering I'm using a mechanical pencil. Basically any mechanical pencil or wooden pencil will do. Doesn't matter as long as it leaves marks on the page. Um, so I'm going to put in a bit of a chest here, and it looks like the body is kind of wider at the uh, the chest, and then kind of tapers in around the hip. I'm not too sure, but just kind of what I'm gathering by this this um, skeleton I'm looking at. I think the hip and leg will be here. And shoulder will be about there. Now I don't always use um like you know circles and lines as you probably notice if you've been following this channel for a while, but um occasionally I'm gonna put in little bits of um reference points, mainly for the skeleton for the skeleton. I'm trying my best to have best articulation blah 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 articulation. And also I'm trying to not edit this video, because the more editing I need to do, the longer it takes for videos to get out. And the last video has been out about 
what, two months ago, so it's not very good. Um, <coughs> sorry for the eardrums are just in. I may have to edit this video just to get rid of coughs, but hey, we'll see what happens. Okay, so, what we're going to do is going to put in a, a bit of a bone here for the forearm. Is that, no, that's not forearm, that's the, the, just the upper arm. Have another bone here for the arm. Gonna have a, it seems to have very small wrists from what I gather. The good thing though is that the picture on the National Geographic website has a good zoom in of the image so we can focus on details later. Um, got a hip bone or upper leg bone, another leg bone, the hip will be about there, we're not going to focus too much on the hip, mainly just using the bones, and that was a motorcycle, it's, uh, it's about what, 5.30pm oh, in Melbourne at the moment, which means everyone's heading home from work, which means you're going to hear a lot of cars in the background, I apologize. Going to put in a calf bone. It's probably not a calf bone, but you know, when have I ever been good at articulating and describing things properly? We're basically just, we're doing a advanced stick figure. So that's going to be the ankles. Probably should maybe sink about a little line very, very rough, rough line for where the feet are going to go. Okay. So, we're going to have a bit of a... I guess that's the ankle that would be... What, I'm going to stop focusing on trying to describe the actual bone structures and what they're called and just draw them and you will figure it out as we go along. There's an ankle, sort of. As I just said, I'm not going to describe it. Oh well. We're just going to draw things as we go about. That's a little toe claw thing. It's going to be the toes, and that's going to be like the bottom of the foot. That's kind of the bottom of the foot there. And there seems to be a bit of a, a little bit of a pelvis bone there. And a bit of a pelvis bone there. Well, I'm not going to focus too much on the pelvis bones. Well, like I said, this is just an advanced stick figure. I just wanted to draw the Spinosaurus far more anatomically correct than my previous attempts. See how we go. Because I'm using National Geographic as a reference, so they should know what they're doing. I'd like to hope so, anyway. Speaking of references, now that I've got sort of the general length and um, height, I guess you call it, I'm going to now go back to the website and I'm going to use some of their other reference images to get further bits of detail. The only problem is that their website has hidden bits of information. Oh, no, there we go. What I can do while I'm drawing these bits now is can kind of, um, they have information on the website about the specific parts. It's a very good website. I, I'm, I'm going to put the link in and you should definitely check it out. I'm just going to quickly draw in the claws and the fingers and a finger, another claw, finger. This is very rough, very, very rough. And I was just thinking before, I was attempting to, but I decided I'm going to do it later. I'm going to study more about Velociraptor claws and all different kind of dinosaur claws, and I'm going to do a video on how to draw dinosaur hands and that. But I want to get a little bit more anatomically correct before I focus on that part. And um, it just says here, getting around, Spinosaurus was so front heavy that it was likely walked, that it likely walked on four limbs. Forearm and hand joints were fairly rigid, so its fingers likely rested on the ground. Hands may have pointed inward or outward. 
so they're not fully sure on how it would have walked. It's all possible gestures, but um, possible positions, but it seems like it would not have walked on its hind legs. It would have rested on its front feet, which is why the main of the big point of this um, tutorial is to f draw those front and back hands and get them done properly. So what I'm going to do is, now that we've got a bit of the um, shoulder point, the, um, we basically got our uh, rectangles and lines. I'm going to, I should probably just draw a skeleton of the Spinosaurus at some point. Um, I'm going to flesh out the the bits. Problem is with the way that my light is facing right now, it's adding a shine on my lead, which is making it hard to actually see my lines. Uh, looks like there'd be a shoulder there. Um, uh, we'll make that arm thicker. Have a bit of a thick arm there. And a shoulder, not shoulder, elbow. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking what I might do for this video. It's going to be another long one. But when my videos aren't long these days. So I'm going to do like a little bit of a... I'm going to draw the hands here, like the claws. But I'm going to draw them bigger so it gives you a better idea. It's like three dimensionalisms are very difficult to explain, let alone draw. It's hard enough to draw them, let alone explain them. That's probably how I should have said it. Drawing these claws in and drawing some fingers and the claws would kind of point inwards and maybe have a claw coming out like so had a very big sickle claw on its hand i do believe i do very much remember that from my childhood years seeing that spinosaurus had a very big thumb claw that it probably would have used for fishing so what i'm going to do now that we've got that kind of drawn in is I'm going to actually draw that hand in a larger scale. So what we're going to do is going to have a, like the wrist. I'm just going to draw it from like the elbow part down because it has very very short forearms, very short forearms. I'm drawing the, the bone structure at the moment. Then it has what appears to be as it says, very rigid finger bones. So it look, actually, it looks like the wrist, the um, the f top part of the uh, hand is all fused together. And around here, there's a bit of a bone. Like, and it looks like it only has one bone for the thumb or sickle claw or whatever it's going to be called whatever this bone I'm drawing right now is it only has one big bone for it and then a big scary claw it, it very much has actually really if you think about it, it looks like it's got velociraptor feet but for hands and to be honest when um before there was any news, any visuals of the Indominus Rex, I totally thought that, because I mentioned the Indominus Rex was going to be a com combination of Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor, I thought that the Indominus Rex would actually have Velociraptor feet for hands, something like that. But um, anyway, I digress. And it has, for its fingers, it's got fairly long-ish um, digits. Then another claw, oh, not a claw, another digit bone. This bone will be a little bit smaller or shorter. And then I'm, I'm drawing, the reason why I'm drawing these um, 
clause very narrow like this is to give the impression that they are pointing inwards. For example, okay, hmm, how do I explain this in three-dimensionalisms? I'll try and explain this quickly. Okay, imagine I'll draw a velociraptor claw, okay? Velociraptor claw. Let's draw an upside in the, yeah, we'll draw a velociraptor claw, okay? From side view, that's kind of what a velociraptor claw looks like. Basically, it looks like a, 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 um, a moon with one thick end and the pointed end. Okay, that's what it looks like on the side. Front view, it would look pretty much like this. You'd have the point in the front. It, it's fairly narrow consistently throughout. So you'd only really see the point in front of this square. And it'd be thin, so that's the side view. That's the front view. To get it to look like it's more three-dimensional is you would bring the point in towards that. You would be narrowing this in to look like that. And thus, it would look more kind of like this. So you're basically just squishing it in, really. But that gives the impression. And also what I do is I draw like you know, a little bit of the edge there and a little bit of the edge there. And that's how you kind of make it look like it's kind of pointing towards you. That's how you make a claw or a curved object seem a little bit more three-dimensional, three which is what I'm doing, trying to do here. And also trying to do here. Yeah, the problem is now my claw is messing in with my hand. But anyway, I'm just going to flesh out this hand. And then the wrist. Flesh out that bit of wrist. And that would also actually be the elbow as well. What I should do at some point is try and draw this. Maybe I'll try focusing on making a video. Because I'm using a A4 page. Paper, as you can see from the size of my hand. Um, I wonder, I should go larger scale down the track. Anyway, here's the thumb claw. Thumb, yeah. Here is the um, just fleshing out the digits. Fleshing out the digits and giving a little bit of, a little bit subtle bit of padding, but you wouldn't be able to see much of it. And what I'm going to do is just going to erase lightly the bones so that you can kind of see. I want to keep the bones in there enough so you guys can actually see the skeletal structure. But so you can actually get an idea of how the skin would probably look like fleshed out around that bone. So the, the fingers uh, join around there, so that would be where the end of the line would go, and that would probably be how the hand would go. It's a very complicated um, method of thinking, considering how the whole Spinosaurus is a whole new, it's been completely redone. So there's a lot of learning involved, which I guess, you know, is the whole point of art. We're all learning, we're always learning. If you're not always learning, even if you're like a professional, if you're not always learning new things, you know, what's the point? So anyway, continue on. Uh, the boat. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about your eardrums just then. I may have to edit this video after all. Uh, anyway, ribs. Just lightly. Uh, okay, now that we've kind of got something going on, I'm going to flesh out from the hip. The, there would be a muscle that goes to the knee, and then that muscle would go towards the ankle, do the back of the calf muscle, put it towards that ankle. 
or heal. Um, and then we have a bit of a flesh. Um, that muscle, whatever that muscle is called, have that connect to the back of the pelvic bone. And then we'll have um, the stomach. The stomach line. My lines are messy. That stomach line will go connect towards the pelvis. It should be also the point of where we would draw. So we're going to lightly draw in this part of leg because we won't actually be seeing it because it'll be covered by stomach. But just to help you with three dimensional visualization, that is how where the lines would probably go. Then you just erase those bits. Unless you want to imagine this Spinosaurus is th um, transparent or translucent. So I'm going to erase those lines. May as well erase these bones now. Because we won't be needing them. Okay, there we go. And gonna refine the leg a bit, get the heel, and then down to the bottom of the foot. I'd probably draw this a lot better if, um, if I wasn't trying to explain what I'm doing. Maybe that's what I'll do one day, I'll have like a video of me drawing this just without annotations and one version with me drawing it with annotations which won't look as good because trying to imagine descriptions while drawing is a very complicated task. Uh, here's a claw, here's another claw, is that a claw? Yeah, I can sort of say claw there in the skeleton image. So I'm drawing the claws, the toes kind of connect there, draw a bit of padding underneath that foot, I hope you can really see I hope you can see that because it's it's very complicated. Maybe I should zoom in. Let, okay, block your ears for a second. This may be a bit loud. Nah. Should have done this from the beginning. Actually, no. bugger it. I hope I've just messed up my video. Maybe there, there, there. If I keep this video unedited, that's going to sound really average. Bear with me. I think I just messed it up a little bit. Maybe come on, pull out a bit more. That'll do. I'm not going to worry too much about zooming in because it just messed up everything, so I'm sorry about that. Um, what we're going to do next? Um, we'll go back to that other. Let's. Um, actually, no, we're going to continue on the feet. This is going to be a horrible. There's a plane. Or is it a helicopter? Is that like a, no, it's a plane. Anyway, continue on the foot. Draw another claw. Have the toes. Um, the f the um, bottom of the toes. And maybe have it a little bit lower down. Yeah, I kind of messed up a little bit there. Because I kind of want to have it a little bit further down, so sort of like here, have the lower part of the padding of the foot goes up. And then we have like another toe slightly in front of it to make it look three dimensional from side view. Have the toes coming up like that. Hopefully that makes some sense. Also, I saw some people commenting on a previous video where they were actually saying that they understood the concepts, etc. That I asked them to comment if they did understand it. So thank you for doing that. Those people who did that, if you are watching this video as well, we'll see if you are. Um, 
I'm just going to draw a little bit of a line here that indicates a muscle. Another line here that will indicate a muscle, and another line here. Just drawing lines that kind of indicate muscles, just to get a little bit more of a fleshed out vibe. Also, from the looks of the rib cage, the rib cage goes all the way back to the back. It's not like it's not like this kind of rib cage. It's like long, so it almost looks like that. This the belly or the torso would go like that, and have a bit of a side part muscle for the ribs, like that. Um, I'm going to draw the top part of the hip, a uh, bit messy, and so that's kind of the torso area. Let's now click back in this reference image, see if it shows. It shows the ah yeah, it shows the head and neck flexibility. Ah, here's some more information. <coughs> Sorry about that cough. And I'm actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back to that other image and. Try and get my proportions a little bit better. So there's the neck. Has a bit of a thick, fairly thick neck. And quite a, a thick, long neck that kind of goes like that. Yeah, S curves, not curves. They're not well. They are curves, but not. We'll say they're S shaped. They're more C shaped actually. And then. Just to focus on the head a little bit, I'm going to draw a bit of a long This probably, uh, what we'll do is I'll focus on the head last Focus on the head last and we'll work on the sail actually Just to, just so we can have as, not zoom in as much as we need to Wait till the last point to zoom in So I'm just going to draw the spine of bones I, I'm just drawing so the edges, not the actual shape of the bones of the, because when you look at rib cages, you don't really see the whole shape of the bone. You kind of see more like an indentation, and that is the vibe that we're going for here. Uh, something like that, and then I'm gonna put in some of the lumps, maybe a little bit of a spike at the end of each of the sail bones and this will work for the spiny sail some more lumps his lovely lady bumps or something like that I don't know how the song goes just adding in a dad joke there even though I'm not a dad <laughs> I'm gonna put in some more bumps here on the top of each spine or, yeah, spine is what they are, they're not ribs. Spiny flat bones. It's kind of like that. It's have them sort of a little bumpy and wavy, like so. I think that probably will do. And this lot, this side can probably be a little bit more rounded. There we go, hopefully that kind of looks okay. And I was just doing some refining lines, I do that sometimes. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my page over here a little bit and see if we can make this tail look okay. It, um, it, it, the, the spines along the back go like so, thus we would have the spine kind of... Okay. How do I explain this? Okay, there is the middle of the tail, and I really should have added some more page. So, if you're going to complain about how the Spinosaurus would be longer, I'm well aware of that. Just my page is only 
Okay, what I'll do, so we won't have people complain about the length of the tails too short, we'll just have the tail rolling in on itself. And I think this is actually a trick that a lot of artists do. So, if you're an artist, and you need to have a long, whippy tail to fit into your page, but it won't fit into your page, make it curl in on itself, like so. I'm going to draw the bottom of the tail. Long, flowy lines, so I'm using long, flowy strokes. And you can have, you can like do, 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 do like I'm doing it, some people like can do one perfect stroke, but I'm not one of those people. And then what I do around here, because uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do here to make it look like it's, it's turned around, is, okay, we've got this shape. Oh, I've only had 31 minutes. Doing all right, actually. Sorry, just randomly commentating to myself. What would what I do here is we can make it look like it, you know, can just do it like that. And that's, you know, making it look like it's kind of it could be going around or it could be going underneath itself. But I find the best way to make it look like also what I'm gonna do here, just to you know give you guys some extra bit of information, is it's all about your line usage at this point. So, if you want your tail to look like it's, um, <coughs> if you want your tail to look like it's twirling towards us, twirling towards us, we have a line that goes from the top part of this tail, draw it through, draw the line through, and then connect it to the top part of that top line. So, see that? And that gives the impression that it's flipped around. It, hopefully you can see that. Or, alternatively, I'll, I'll, I'll erase it to a point where you can still, I, I don't know if you can still see it, but alternatively, if you want to do it, say the the tail is turned the opposite side, do something like the opposite. You do the bottom of that line, draw the curved line through but downwards instead, and connect it to there. And that way, it kind of looks like it's curved around. And that way, is if I I find it gives a bit more of a three dimensional impression personally but i am going to stick with the other line that i used because i want it pointing towards us that's just that's just kind of how i prefer you can do it however you want you can just not do it at all and have it curved or you can have the light tail come way out whatever your heart desires but i'm going to do it like that and because the spine um yeah, the spine uh, vertebrae, I think that's what I'm looking for. The middle part of the bone, the middle part of the spine vertebrae would be like that. The top part of the spines kind of go right along. So, like, if you've seen a fish, how the fish kind of go like, you know, like that. Fish bits of bone go up like that. So, like, kind of like a Christmas tree, I guess. A Christmas tree that's on its side. So that's what the spine kind of looks like. It's got a whole bunch of those lines, getting narrower and narrower as you as you draw along. And um, <coughs> um, then we'll have a line that kind of indicates that curve, because that's also where there'd be a muscle, I think. Or actually, I'm not necessarily sure. Hang on, let me just think. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw something for my own references. Let's see how we go. I'm going to try and draw a... Okay. The skeleton that looks like it'd be like, you know, this. It would have a tan thing going up for the spine. Bottom bit going down for the spine. 
That's how it would look like if it was cross section, I, I'd imagine. Might have a little bit of a thing going out like that. So I'd imagine they'd be like, normally I would have drawn it so it'd be like the tail would be like, you know, a lump up here for the spine. Then another line down here for the bottom bit, but maybe it'd be more, maybe it'd be more curved. So that's how I would normally draw a tail. Maybe a little uh, indentation there. And then that line would be like, you know, tail, tail. Oh, that's great. I can draw it to look like this. Probably not making any sense. <laughs> we'll see how we go, though. You can sort of see how it kind of looks like, you know, how I draw a tail sometimes. Or it could just be very much just a round circle. So maybe sometimes I make my tails way more complicated than they need to be. Who knows? But anyway, continuing on. I'm uh, just going to continue that line. My camera stand is getting in the way of my hand. So like that. Just going to refine a bit. I think that looks okay. Okay, now that I've explained that part, I'm going to zoom in now. Um, the only problem here is my camera... Actually, what I'm going to, have to do is pull out a little bit. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm drawing. Nor will I be able to have any room to place my hand under there. Are we focused? I think we're focused. All right. <coughs> I really hope that's not too loud, my coughing. So, now we're just going to do a rough shape. Narrow bits for the jaw. Narrow bit that expands out for the top of the jaw. And now I'm going to go back to the website. And read some of, I'm going to read a quick little excerpt of what it says about the flexible neck. Connecting balls in the socket of the neck bones allowed for flexible wi flexibility while holding large flailing prey in the jaws. Oh, well, there you go. And the other bit of information that I had was, I'm assuming the skull. Yes, nose of a hunter. While swimming, Spinosaurus sensed prey using pressure sensitive blah, 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 pressure sensitive receptors lining pits on its snout okay allowed the dinosaur to breathe when on the hunt okay right here then ah okay i think i am going to have to draw a how to draw a spinosaurus head pretty soon actually I think that may have to be my next video. I don't know if I've already drawn this, how to draw Spinosaurus head, but if not, I do believe I'm going to do that. Anyway, let's just continue on. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Draw the, I'm going to lighten up my lines now. Yes, I definitely think Spinosaurus head is going to be the next drawing. I am going to work on a Gigantosaurus, and there's a whole bunch of things I know I have to do. I've been meaning to do this for like the whole last year, but I will get there eventually. Okay, so the, the nose part sort of curves in, then curves out, goes in, and sort of curves down to about there. Then we have the jaw that curves out and then down to about there. Then it curves in, then curves out. So it's got like a little bit of a nubbly bowl bit at the end. Then it goes down and it has a it goes quite narrow to fairly wide. Like so, 
Save it like a chicken drumstick, I guess. A, a twisty chicken drumstick. And also I imagine that that is closing, so like, you know, we've got the, the head. Think of the mouth also. Ah, can't see that. There you go. Sorry. Think of the nose like, okay, what I've just drawn. So that'd be the nose. Think of the jaw now comes up into the bowl, into the indentation of the mouth. So, you know, try to imagine that when drawing your dinosaur mouths, or any mouths for that matter, try to imagine how the bottom part will connect in with the top part. And that should be able to make it a little bit more realistic. Should. Doesn't mean it will. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to continue on now. I'm going to just make that line come up there. Spinosaurus has a fairly triangular skull. Be an eye around there. And you can draw your eyeball, not that you can even see that, but um, draw your eyeball to be circular or the iris to be circular or fish like. Um, I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if um, any of that has been scientifically discovered what the pupils of a dinosaur would look like. I'm um, just going to draw little indentations for the rest of the skull part, and its head part is fairly triangular angular out like that definitely 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 going to have to draw a spinosaurus head definitely might have to draw that right after i record this video um so there's a uh, i think the nose is up here has quite a long snout has what appears to be a bumpy thing on his head. I don't know if scientists have discovered what this bony lump on the top... Mm, actually, to be honest, I think it's a little bit far up to the top of its head. Need to erase this part, because that head bumpy thing is more like down here. Oop. Like so. And then just gotta draw in some of the teeth. So some biggish teeth at the front of the mouth. Then they get smaller, then they get bigger again. Like so. For catching the fush. Yes, I said like that, catching the fush. Then some teeth along this part. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some like lines along its neck, sort of a twisty thing. Apparently it had a few little um, lumpy bits along its neck as well, just to make it look a bit more flexible. Like so. And then I think it's a good idea to pull the camera out and tidy it up a bit. So I'm just going to erase some of these lines that we don't need anymore. I'm going to erase some of these lines. Um. Wait, I'll erase some of the ribs and then maybe refine it. These drawings aren't, aren't particularly meant to be, you know, perfect and, you know, they're more of a, just a guide reference for you guys to use. So I'll clean up this part of the tail because that was a bit of a mess. 
I was using this skeleton as a reference anyway, so just gonna erase some of those lines, erase some of those, get rid of the bones and the legs, because we don't really need them now. Get rid of the shoulder bones. up the shoulder a little bit, just going to refine it a little bit some pieces. I'm just going to add in some lines for like skin folds and wrinkles just to add a little bit of depth and detail. I'm going to put in some neck wrinkles, which I usually put little little lines and wrinkles just to give it a, you know, make it look like it's got a flexible neck and esophagus. Um, might do a little bit of detailing maybe for along the back because I think it. I'm kind of imagining it to have a bit of a a white sort of body because it it apparently lives or spends a lot of time in the water or underwater. So I'm just kind of giving it what I imagine would be a bit of a a fish like pattern and I'm not going to do much too much detail just you know a few little dots just to I don't know, just to make it a little bit more styled I could I could put in a lot more detail in this but um I don't know keep it simple I'd say I might do another one down the track that's a little bit more advanced but I'm keeping this one fairly simple I'm just gonna add some little dots and pattern just to make it look a little bit more interesting and add some like sort of dotty I'm, I'm, I'm making these sort of patterns <coughs> and shades and whatnot not very um, particular just to give it a bit you know like I said just give it a bit of a vibe Maybe add some little dots along here. I did see some cool, um, a, a cool sculpture of a Spinosaurus on Google Images, which kind of gave me an idea of, you know, how to tackle a Spinosaurus in the future. So I might actually give it a few little um, zigzaggy lines just to give it a bit of a, a very rough, loose scale look. Very, very rough and very loose. And we'll do these lines light because, you know, just doing it rough. We mainly wanted to focus on the body and, you know, something... Basically, I just wanted to get a video out there because I haven't done anything in a while. I've been editing my 5,000 and 6,000 subscriber video, which are long overdue. Chances are I'll probably get to 7,000 subscribers by the time those videos are done, but I'm, I've got them nearly done. I'm just putting in a few little details in the hands and legs and such, just little lines. Nothing too specific. And I'm going to add in a little bit of a line there for muscle, but I don't know about you, but I think that's all right for now. And I decided to keep these bits in a little bit more, just, you know, just to sort of give it a... This is more of a study drawing than an actual, you know, full-on proper drawing, so... I think the next thing I'm going to work on is a Spinosaurus head on its own, but hopefully those people who wanted something a little bit more, um, more uh, anatomically correct and scientifically accurate, hopefully this um, uh, whets the appetite or cr crush it, crushes the thirst for 
uh, accuracy or whatever. But anyway, hopefully, hopefully it's you know better than what I've done in the past. Let's just say that. And now when people go on my Jurassic Park three Spinosaurus drawing, going that's not how Spinosaurus looks, I'll be like, yeah, I know. Here's this video of one that I've you know done further. And in that video, I specified that it was a Jurassic Park. 3 Spinosaurus. It wasn't a Spinosaurus, it was a Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. So, if you want to get your knickers in a knot, go right ahead, but, you know, there's a ambulance driving past. But yeah, I think that, I think that does the trick. Hopefully you like it. I've got more that I'm going to draw. Because, you know, I keep saying I'm going to draw more, and I will, it's just, you know, just a matter of doing it, and I have been a little bit slack the last couple of months, but thank you guys for sticking by, if you have, hopefully you like this video, if you have, uh, give it a thumbs up and comment and all that good stuff, and um, yeah, I will have more for you soon-ish, or sooner or later, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time, cheerio for now.